Okay, in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off uh, in the previous video where we had set up a project in our magnet and then calibrated the floor plan so we could be ready to start our survey. Now, I'm still in the hotel, but I'm not using the hotel's wireless anymore. Looking at the H Honors uh, SSID, I've brought in my own Cisco 2602i and my Cisco 3560 switch to power it with. And I've got my laptop networked into that so that we can access the GUI on the access point. So if you remember in the previous video, we had to go in and set the power settings for the access point. Um, when you're doing a survey based on what client devices you are using, you have to uh, set the access point's power level down to the client level of the devices so that your uh, send and receive signals are optimized. So I'm going to take you into the GUI of a Cisco 2602 access point and show you what it looks like. I've took the username and password back to the Cisco defaults uh, for this video. Over here on the left, I'm going to show you the easy setup, network configuration, where I went in and named the access point. I've given it uh, an IP address, subnet mask, and over here I've created an SSID and give it a VLAN and set it up so that we have AM survey for our magnet survey to test with. So I'm going to go back to the home page and if you look right here you have your radios, your 2.4 and your 5 gig and these green arrows show that the interfaces are up. My Ethernet interface is up because it's plugged into the switch. My two radios are up because I've activated them but I'm going to click on the 5 gig radio because that's what I'm going to survey with. And I'm going to click on the settings page. And you notice the current status of the software and hardware is up. It's an access point as its role in the network. And here are the data rates that I've set it up to require. 36 megabits per second uh, minimum and 48 and 54. And of course I've set up my MCS rates for N. And so right here, this access point, based on the channel that it's setting on, is uh, already set at our 14 milliwatts. But I'm going to show you our power translation table. Here is your DBM and your milliwatt conversion. So if you look, the max power of this radio is 14 milliwatts, which, or 14 DBM so that equals 25 milliwatts so I have my radio set to where I want to and if you'll notice my client device I've got it set to 14 as well here's where you can choose the band the channel width uh, anything else you want to choose and you will scroll down the bottom and click apply your changes alright so the other thing we want to make sure that we can do um, uh, if you if you need to configure this, you also need to know that you go into your Ethernet settings on your particular laptop or whichever device that you're using and look at the properties and configure this to be on the same subnet as your access point so that you can actually access it and work those configurations. So, that being said, I will minimize that and we will open up the air magnet survey. Now the air magnet software I'll go ahead and turn that off. Yes I would want to open the last project which is the uh, Hilton Hotel that we looked at in the other video. Now remember at this point in time our video our um, drawing is configured and I've already went in and set up our SSIDs and everything to save time in this video, but we're going to go over and click survey. Now, when we click survey, it's going to ask us if we want to choose where the access point if we're doing the active AP, as of course we did. Uh, so I'm not looking for H honors this time, I am actually looking for AM survey. That's the access point's SSID and there's the name of the AP, Brett's 2602i. So that's the AP I want to survey with. Now, 
I click start it's going to say do you want to specify the access point location first yes I do so I want to put it right there and you can come up here and blow it up and most people will if they're going to start surveying now remember the next thing that we want to do if we're going to survey for a threshold for voice or data we have to move this bar over here so come over here and grab that and set our grayed out area to next 67 which is what we're looking for and I want to show you really quickly that the actual signal strength now with my access point versus the hotel that we saw in the other video is a lot stronger I'll bring that up so that you can see that so now you see that the signal strength is a neg 28 instead of like a neg 70 neg 73 and the signal to noise ratio is extremely strong why actually I'm sitting on the desk right beside it but to show you how the survey works I'm going to start surveying as if I'm standing right beside the access point and I will start walking the algorithm in the software will do its little blue dots there which are its automatic data gathering points and I will start walking around and walking around and I will walk the entire floor plan I'm gonna speed this up just for the video but I will walk the entire floor plan until I step out of range and I start getting grayed out areas now it's not getting accurate readings of course because I'm still sitting at the table right beside it so I'm going to stop the survey and I'm not going to save because I have actually already done this survey for the sake of time so if I will go over here to the display I'm going to click active survey and show you the walk path that I walked now here I have walked all the way around the entire area done all these walk paths and all the different rooms and if you'll look here at the color codes it gives us the signal strength down through here now you remember it's not displaying what we want to see so we have to show what we want to see so there's what we're looking for now we know how far this particular access point will cover before we have to decide to put another access point in so with that being said and our next 67 voice range here according to specs and uh, Cisco best practice standards and of course best practice standards of all other vendors you want to have about a 20 25 percent overlap of your access point coverage so you will actually take another AP and place it down here somewhere and run this test again now I'm not going to confirm the move because it'll mess up the survey but we can actually go back to survey and move our floor plan over here and I can grab that access point and slide it down the hallway remember our coverage came right through here somewhere and it cut out so I can start right down here again click on survey and I can start surveying again and start traveling and I'll go ahead and do this really quick just to um, give you an idea of how these look this access point here is not going to be accurate at all just going to throw some bits out there just to kind of prove a point here all right that's probably about enough I'm going to stop it and I'm save it as active survey number two all right now you notice how blue it is because I'm setting like two feet from the access point for the entire survey now it's obvious that that is not accurate because everything is blue it's it's really strong blue so we got a neg 20 throughout the entire building which is it looks like the AP followed me through the whole building 
but I want to kind of show you this. You can click on this and do a data merge between both of these access points and call it merged one. I can change this to any name that I want to. And in merged one, you see the both access points up here and the overlap. So I can look at display AP1 and I can see where the coverage dropped off, which it actually didn't drop off. It just dropped below my threshold. Then I can look at Active Survey 2. Now, my first AP dropped off right about here, and Active Survey number 2 dropped off right in here. So, when I look at the merge, I know that I've got a good overlap of about 20% down the hallway, and if I had surveyed that right, that, act, that location probably would have been right. I may have had to move it here, but the whole idea is when you survey the access points, you need to make sure that your overlap is correct and you don't have them in direct line of sight of each other down the hallway so that this AP is transmitting an extremely strong signal right on top of this one. You want to kind of move them around and hide them so that this happens right here and all that real strong blue is not down here on this other AP. So you can actually go over here, turn off the merged paths because all you really want to see is the data rates. I'll go back to Active Survey 1 and the data rates of AP1 here you can actually look at and match the colors and see what they are. You can also click on it and you can look at the channel, the BSSID, signal strength, noise, signal to noise ratio and you look at the data rates this is important for your uh, client a lot of times. You see the data rate, the retried packets, the lost packets, and that's very important when you're doing the survey. You don't want to see a lot of retries and you don't want to see any losses. So that's pretty much it for a survey and you just duplicate that process over and over and over as you go through the building. Now, you don't find the exact location of the AP every time you survey. Sometimes you have to survey the same AP two or three times as you move it to find the right location to get that proper overlap, especially through walking paths. So if you're walking through a door coming out of one access point's coverage into another, you need to make sure there's a strong signal strength of both APs overlapped right there near that uh, NEC67 edge so that as you transition through that door there's a good handoff between the two access points. You don't want to walk through a door and have dead signal and you don't want to have a really strong signal of both access points in the same place which would make it disassociate and reassociate, disassociate and reassociate. So um, that's about it for that and we will see you in the next video.